You were an All-American, obviously. You were a 2023 Katrina, excuse me, Katrina McLean Award winner, which is basically like the best power forward um, in the country, guys. She was also the 2023 Naismith Player of the Year, which is a very big deal. The 2023 Wade Trophy finalist. She was a two-time Big East Player of the Year, a 2023 Scholar Athlete of the Year, a 13-time Big East Player of the Week, which is a record. Um, Villanova's all-time leading scorer with 2,896 points. I'm almost done, guys. <laughs> she was also the fifth player in Division I women's basketball history to score 1,000 points in a season. She was also the first player this in this century in both men's and women's Division I's basketball to log 37 consecutive 20-point games. That, like, just thinking about that is so insane. <laughs> um, she also holds the Big East single-game scoring record with 50 points. Um, she's Big East all-time leading scorer in regular season conference games with 1,693 points. Um, she became the Philadelphia Big Five women's all-time leading scorer. She's second in program history for rebounding with 1,102 boards. And I'm sure there's, like, so much more. <laughs> no, you, you think you got them all. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to more Access. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. I have a very special guest, so I'm so, so excited um, many of you, if you've watched college basketball, I'm sure you know who she is. Um, she played at Villanova. She's one of the greats. She now plays in the pros. Um, but yeah, everyone, this is Maddie Segrist. What's up? Thanks for having me. Super Thanks. excited. Thanks for being on. I also forgot to mention y'all, we did play together for three on three USA. I want to say like, it feels like a year ago, but I think it was two years ago. Yeah, I think two. Dream yeah. team though. They both yeah. have to run it back. Yeah, sure. they're going to have to run it back. <laughs> I believe us three right now, us four, me, you, Maddie, Alyssa. Alyssa. Yeah, run it back right now. Yeah, I'm taking for it. For sure. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for being on. Um, I'm so excited. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm excited. This is great. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start with, you know, your early, you know, early career, you playing basketball. How did you start playing basketball? Um, I know just from knowing you a little bit that your dad has had a big influence um, on your yeah. basketball career. So just tell me about, you know, what made you pick up the basketball? Just like young age, like CYO, my dad had coached like uh, Marist College when I was like really little, probably till I was like five or six. And then, you know, just played CYO like with everyone else that was like, you know, he did dance, he did basketball, he did softball, he did all the little things. And then probably not till like middle school is when I really started to be like, oh, this is something, you know, I want to just focus on. Yeah. No, makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So growing up, um, was playing D1 basketball always a dream of yours or was it just like, I'm good enough, so I'll do it? <laughs> no, definitely a dream. Probably like seventh grade, made the B team. Tough, tough day <laughs> in Gypsy that day. And then uh, that's when I was like, okay, I want to be a basketball player. And like, you know, I started playing like local AAU and I remember like there'd be like one division three coach at the games in like eighth grade. And I'm like, Dad, like, do you think I'm going to go Division One? He's like, yeah, if you keep practicing. But uh, probably wasn't until, like, high school. I wasn't like you. I wasn't great right off the bat. <laughs> Took me a little bit. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so kind of going back to us first meeting for the first time and playing on USA and the tryouts. Um, was that – I know for me, I just got, like, an email um, saying to come try out. Was that the same for you? Yeah, so my coach at Villanova, Denise, like, she had called me in and was like, hey, like, would you be interested in playing like three on three USA basketball? I don't know if it was like, would you be interested? It was like, they, I think you're interested yeah. type thing. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, definitely. And then like, it was in Miami, right? That was the tryouts where. Yeah. Tryouts were in Miami. Yeah. Were you nervous at all? I was nervous. Cause like, yeah. I remember I didn't even know who else was going until like the day before. Not that like it would have made that big of a difference, but I was like, I don't know. Like the first day it's like so awkward. I remember us all sitting at the breakfast table. Like, <laughs> Hey, can I sit here? <laughs> I know. And it's so crazy looking back now. Like, I don't even know when me and you even started talking or how we yeah. became, like, friends. <laughs> probably early. Probably, like, right off the bat. Yeah. Um, like, we all sat together and everyone was, like, super nice. I remember thinking, like, oh, I hope everyone's nice. Yeah. I know. Do you remember when I think they were telling us and we, like, walked in the room with our jerseys and we were, like, freaking out? <laughs> <laughs> well, what about when they they call the names and they're, oh, like, that, that was who's going to make it? Yes. Everyone's like shaking. I'm like, say Maddie, say Maddie. Say Maddie. <laughs> I know. Me and Maddie Westbelt. So I'm like, which Maddie? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That was, that was a time for sure. I think I was almost going to pee myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. Everyone was nervous. And then the jerseys, that was sick. 
yeah that was, no. my, that was my first USA team I don't know about you but I was like this is awesome yeah for me it was my second but my first time was U16 and so it had been a minute uh, yeah, um, so yeah. that was like my first in like three years and so for it to be a three on three and then I was playing with like you Maddie and Alyssa who were older than me I was like oh my god they're, <laughs> so, the like, they're so good <laughs> I really was the baby I was like oh my god they're so good I was like, this is going to be so fun. But yeah, I don't, it was just an exciting time. But do you have like a favorite memory from when we did that? Well, I'm trying to think because Dominican Republic was fun because we won every game. We just beat everybody. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Romania, I feel like bonded every, we, we, we became a group. Yeah. Because like all the food, like trying all the food together, (laughs) going swimming. (laughs) What sea was we, were we in? We're all floating. We're like, all floating. Like in the sea. Yes. And we played, was it like a ball? Yeah, we ca- catch, like, keep yes. away, like, keep up. I don't even know. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yes, that was so fun. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Memory unlocked. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. That was actually, Romania was, like, beautiful. I didn't, uh, the bus ride. Remember? <laughs> oh, oh, my God. I forgot about the bus ride. Yeah. And they were, like, telling us to stay, they were, like, oh, try to stay up so you get used to the time. I knocked. <laughs> Immediately knocked. Same. I'm, like, they're, like, try to stay up on the bus. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Out. I know. When I was there, like, all my teammates would be texting me, and I'm, like, I'm about to go to bed, guys. <laughs> they were, like, we're about to start practice. I was, like, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> um, But you guys have fun. Oh, gosh. Yeah, didn't you miss the mile? I did, yes. We were talking about You didn't have to run it. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to run my mile either. Yeah, you know, and when I, I when I got back, my coach was like, "So, do you want to make it up?" And I was like, "No, <laughs> I don't want to do I'm that." Set. <laughs> yeah, I'm good, coach. Three on three, that got me conditioned. I'm I mean, I'm in the best shape ever. Right? No miles. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, well, to USA was a great time. Hopefully, we'll have a chance to play oh, together again sure. when I go Definitely. pro. That's, That's a goal of mine. <laughs> for sure. Um, but kind of transitioning into you know your college years, you know you. Still are an amazing player, but I mean, Maddie, the resume that you have from college is literally insane. Um, and I'm just going to like read some of it off real quick. Um, it's a very long list. <laughs> Hold on. Um, but you were an All-American, obviously. You were a 2023 Katrina, excuse me, Katrina McLean Award winner, which is basically like the best power forward um, in the country, guys. She was also the 2023 Naismith Player of the Year, which is a very big deal. The 2023 Wade Trophy finalist. She was a two-time Big East Player of the Year, a 2023 Scholar Athlete of the Year, a 13-time Big East Player of the Week, which is a record. Um, Villanova's all-time leading scorer with 2,896 points. I'm almost done, guys. <laughs> she was also the fifth player in Division One women's basketball history to score a thousand points in a season. She was also the first player this in this century in both men's and women's. Division one's basketball to log 37 consecutive 20 point games that like just thinking about that is so insane. <laughs> um, she also holds the big East single game scoring record with 50 points. Um, she's big East all time leading scorer in regular season conference games with 1,693 points. Um, she became the Philadelphia big five women's all time leading scorer. She's second in program history for rebounding with 1,102 boards. And I'm finally done. <laughs> And I'm sure there's, like, so much more. Um, no, you, like, you think you got them all. I, think, I mean, dang, Maddie. <laughs> Jesus, like, did you ever see yourself doing any of that going into college? No. no. Like, when I picked Villanova, like, Villanova was my biggest offer, like, by far. And I was, like, you know, like, you dream, like, a thousand points, I think, is, like, what you think of when you think of, like, a great college career. And, like, I really didn't think past that. Like, I was, like, that would be great. That would be so <laughs> fun to be on a team that wins and get a 1,000 points. Um, and then, like, just as it, like, went on, it just, like, you know, you don't even realize it when you're in it, I don't think. Like, you're just, like, playing. Like, you're just mm-hmm. playing games. Last year was definitely crazy because I did feel like every game was, like, a different record. And, like, yeah. you never even thought of those things. Like, and, you're, like, in the big five, like, there's just so many little things that people get. Yeah today's this and you're like uh, all right like great <laughs> I know for me it was so funny because we really first met at USA and then like after USA I of course I kept up with all of you but like you said you were blowing up like insane breaking your record <laughs> at night and I remember just going on Instagram and I was like a proud mom I was like go <laughs> ready I was like I played no, through three with her I appreciate it no you guys are honestly like so supportive which is like great and I like love watching everybody that we played with or tried out with. Like, I think that's so cool because you get to, like, know other college players. Because, like, outside of, like, your conference, like, yeah, you only know, you know, whoever you grew up playing with that, you know, 
USA really let let us like get to meet so many new people, and you'd be like, oh, I'm gonna watch them because they're playing against each other. Yeah, I always tell people, like, the basketball part and winning is great, but just meeting the people and then following them is, like, it's just the best thing. Oh, yeah. Because, like, you're in the pros now, and we're able to still talk, and it's just, like, (laughs) this is so cool. Like, I played with her, and I'm a fan girl. It's it's great. Yeah. It's great. No, like, I'm gonna, I can't wait to watch you guys, like, all three of you guys in March, like, you know, March Madness, like, that would be so fun, because, like, you're gonna watch the games no matter what, but now you're, like, invested. I'm gonna be, like, rooting. I'm gonna be, you know, (laughs) maybe, maybe, except... Friday, maybe I'll be a little. I'll, I'll root for both teams. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Hey, I understand. I'll root for Texas to win. Drexel will make it close. That'll yeah. be. That's the goal. Okay, understandable. I, I'll let it slide. <laughs> but then after that, Texas all the way. Yeah, I thank you. For sure. <laughs> um, but when I was mentioning like all your accolades, you brought up how it kind of just it didn't just happen to you. Like you worked really hard for it, and you said that Villanova was you said your biggest offer. What do you think it took for all of this to happen? Because obviously it didn't just happen overnight. Like you put in the work. And so when do you think it just kind of clicked for you? So, I mean, I got hurt my first year. Second day of practice, I redshirted, broke my ankle, screws. So like that was tough. And I think like I used that year to literally like watch the game of basketball because middle school, high school, like for, I'm sure it was for you too. You're one of the better ones. You're one of the taller ones for sure. So you didn't even have to use like that much skill. You're just like athleticism and height. So yeah. then once you get to college, it's an adjustment. And then sitting out, I was like, oh, my gosh, the world's going to end. And I think, like, that was the first time, like, I actually watched the game and was like, wow, like, if you're a smart player, you can really help yourself, like, help your team get an easy layup or, like, by setting good screens. So I think having that year to watch, and I also didn't shoot threes in high school. So that whole year, I would literally just sit, like, I had a scooter because my foot was, like, had to be, like, perched. Mm-hmm. And I would just shoot threes. Literally, I would go, like, 500 shots a day because I couldn't do anything else so I'm like I might as well become a better shooter and it wasn't like you know I just wasn't comfortable doing that and I think like now like the way the game's going like the more versatile you can be the better so like that first year like really gave me that foundation to not only just watch but like really like grow my skill set and become like a confident shooter which like definitely helped me like propel into that next year um because I I, you know as a freshman first year playing I didn't know what to expect but to be able to like start I think I started almost every game not in the beginning but then like you're starting you're playing like you're scoring the ball and I think like I wouldn't have had that much success early on without that that first year of just learning yeah no I can definitely relate with the injuries yeah no, for sure. <laughs> yeah my my freshman year I also hurt my ankle and missed like half the season um and I know just from tearing my ACL last year like being out for a year you learn so much from being on the side you just have to watch. Like, you're like, oh, my gosh. And then you're like, see what your teammates are like. Don't you listen, guys? <laughs> yes. You see where your coach is coming from a lot more. <laughs> when you're, yeah, when you're in that position. And then I feel like, like you said, you can use that knowledge. And then I agree with you. I was like, well, I can always be better at shooting, even though I can't really run or do anything else right now. Yeah. I can just work on my mid-range. So that was something for sure. me that I worked on a lot. Um, so I, yeah. definitely, I definitely get what you're saying. Um, but, yeah, no, that's like I said, you had an amazing career. Do you have any, like, favorite – I'll say, like, favorite game, like, maybe when you broke a record that you will never forget. So beating UConn at UConn was on, on – that was great my junior year. That was a lot of fun. And then um, the game at home at Villanova last year to go to the Sweet 16, mm-hmm. I think it was, like, you scored – it might have been the one I scored a 1,000 points in a season, but it was, like, we were, everything was going well for our team. We were playing great. It was a sold-out crowd, and, like, we won, and, like, at the time, I didn't announce that I was going yet, but, like, I remember getting subbed out and looking around, and I was like, it's the last time I'm going to play in this arena. Aww. And, like, if you watch the video, like, I, like, watched it again. Like, you could see, like, I had little tears in my <laughs> eyes. But, like, my teammate, everyone was just so happy we were going to the Sweet 16. But, like, now I look back, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I took that moment in. And I was like, wow, like, look around. Because, like, you know, we didn't have that many fans when I went first got to Villanova. It was like, you know, like, some games, whatever, but, like, Last year, it was like almost every game was sold out, which was yeah. great. And it's like to have that much support. I think, you know, Texas, you guys have a great fan base. So you know what I mean. Like, yeah, when you feel that energy, you're like, wow, this is like, there's no better feeling. No, I definitely agree. Um, so would you say just, I want to know some of the tea. Were you, did you and the men's team get along? So we did. Yeah. So I'm trying to think more like when I was younger, like the boys, like my age. So it was like, uh, who did I come in? I went with Sadiq Bay, who's in the NBA now, mm-hmm. Brent Slater, Cole Swiders. They're all still playing like um, either NBA, G League or two ways. So 
we were all pretty close, which was definitely fun. No, that's cool. Was the men's team also, like, really good, like, NCAA tournament every so, year? No. I think the first two years, yes. The last two years, no. But they're on the upswing. Don't. They are on an upswing. <laughs> Don't even wait. Oh, that's pretty <laughs> funny. Um, but my – the year before I got there, they won the national championship. So the one year I went to the Final Four – in New Orleans, so we all went, our whole team went, which was so much fun. New Orleans is a great place, but 48-hour limit. Can't stay there that <laughs> No, I agree. I've been there one time, and I think we stayed for like three days, and I was like, yep, I'm good. Time to go back home. <laughs> yep, one and done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, well, kind of wrapping up on your college career, like you said, um, I play for Texas. I'm going to the tournament. Um, it's happening in like three days. We have our first game. Ah. Yeah. Is there like any advice that you would give someone um, like me? That's it is yeah. my third year, but I've only played in the tournament. Like I'll say healthy twice. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Is, there, is there any advice you would give me? Just like enjoy the moment. Uh, and that's so like cliche, but like you're prepared. Everything you've done like has got you to this point. Like winning all the game, like, doing everything you've done, like, there's nothing more you can do. So, like, just going and, like, playing confident, playing like you know how. And, like, it's March. Anything can happen. So how many times, like, you have a bad half or you whatever, like, literally next, like, pretend it's 0-0 come out because how many times, like, the team's been down, they come back or, like, something like that. So yeah. just having that in the back of your head, like, anything can happen, like, in a good way. Like, we're going to make something happen. This is our year. This is our run. When you believe in yourself and your team, I think you can go a long way, for sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm so excited. I definitely, yeah, <laughs> thanks. I definitely understand what you say by, like, just live in the moment and enjoy it because yeah. I'm only a junior, but it's like, I swear I was just a freshman, and it's like time, definitely. it's moving so fast. It go And, like, when you're in the tournament, like, I, especially the year before we were in Michigan, we weren't at home, I feel like you're so locked in to, like, the game, the scout shoot around whatever you're doing like you don't even realize like oh my gosh I'm, I'm in the tournament like <laughs> we're playing tonight or like you know we won we're going to the next like, you're just on to the next game so like definitely try to enjoy it like the best you can like whatever it is going to get a little ice cream after whatever you have to do to treat yourself <laughs> do it hey noted I'll be telling my coach <laughs> Maddie said ice cream Maddie <laughs> said like, I have to get ice cream yep. <laughs> He's going to be like, who? <laughs> um, he's not going to say who. He knows who you are. Trust and <laughs> believe. He knows who you are. <laughs> okay, but kind of moving um, into your pro career and what you're doing right now. So you were selected third overall pick um, to the Dallas Wings, which I love the Wings, by the way. So I was really oh, happy when I, when I saw that. Yeah, I was like, yes. And you're close from, you know, I'm from Oklahoma. Yeah. When I'm at home. I'm like, yes, she's close to me. I can go on <laughs> games. Um, yeah, and I sure. well, me being in Texas, too, you're also close. So you're just, you're just close. So I'm definitely going to try and get to the game. Um, Please how, do. How was that moment? Like, just being drafted, I know that was just so surreal. Yeah, so I think similar to, like, you and a lot of, like, this, like, last couple years is, like, you had the COVID year. So that was a big thing is, like, what are you going to do? Are you going to take it? Are you going to go? Um, and it was probably, like, halfway through last year just was, like, leading up to, like, okay, like, your time, like, you know when your time's up, you know when it's time to, like, move on to a bigger challenge, so mm -hmm. that was really hard for me, because, like, I, I love college, I loved Villanova, and if I could stay there forever, I would, <laughs> but, like, I wanted, you know, what we had last year forever, and yeah. it doesn't work like that, you can't, you can't just repeat the same year over and over again, but if I could, I definitely would, so once I decided, I was, like, it felt like the weight of the world was off my shoulders, once I'm, like, okay, I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna try this new journey, and then, Leading up to the draft, like, it was just a whirlwind because you're, like, you're in L.A. for the uh, the Wooden Awards. You're here you're in Dallas for the Mason. You're, like, running around and then you go to New York City. And, like, even though you know, like, you've interviewed with these different teams, like, you kind of know where you're going to go. It's still, like, on the day you're sitting on the table, you're like, oh, my gosh. Like, I hope they pick me. Yeah. <laughs> but once you hear your name, it's, like, so surreal. Like, you hug your family and then you go on the – hour and a half like media tour so it's just like that so you don't even it's like doesn't even set in honestly until like days after you're like I just got drafted like and then like you know you're, I'm in an apartment with all my roommates from Villanova like two days later packing all my stuff up to move to the other side which is just like crazy it's just yeah. so quick but it's so exciting and I think like that whole new journey then you're in training camp and like you're playing with and against people that you've watched your whole life so like that that doesn't ever get old. Like, 
we were playing Vegas, you know, in the fi- in the semifinals this year, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's Asia, Asia Wilson. <laughs> I'm like, Maddie, stop! Like, run back on defense. <laughs> but like, it's so it's such a cool you know thing. Also, like you just watch these people and realizing like you know how prestigious like the WNBA is. Like every opportunity, like you just have to embrace it, and it's cool. Like no matter where you get picked or who, if training camp, not training camp. Like, to see so many different people flourish and, like, their stories on – everybody's stories, how they got there is different. Some people were picked high. Some people, you know, it took them years to get into the league. And it's that's what I think is so cool about the WNBA. Yeah. No, I agree. Everybody's path is, is different. But at the end of the day, if you're good enough and you're tough enough and you just work hard enough, you can reach any of your goals. So, yeah, I think I think Definitely. it's really cool. And I think that's why it's so cool how you said, like, really until you got to Villanova and I guess you could say, like, your sophomore or junior year is when you really – like it just happened for you. And so I think it's really good to like put an emphasis on how everyone's timing is different. And it's all like in God's hand. A hundred percent. Like, look at you now. There's just so much, <laughs> so much that you're going to accomplish. <laughs> well, even like playing in, you know, being in WNBA, being a pro, like I have to remember, I'm like, dude, like this is year one. Like this is your first yeah. experience. Like, and not only like, you know, Villanova was only a couple hours from my house. So it was like, this was like a whole new, like you're becoming an adult too. Like it's yeah. not like college where you have everything like, okay, study hall, you have classes, you have, you know, team meetings. Like you, you can do whatever you want after practice. Like go to the grocery store, don't go out. Like, <laughs> so that's like weird too. Like you're trying to figure it all out. And luckily like my team had a lot of like younger players. Like mm-hmm. uh, I think we had like four or five players like within a few years of me which was great because it's like you're in a similar situation but some of these players are uh, you know they're grown-ups they have families they're going to get their kids from school and you're like oh cool so you're not going to the pool all right <laughs> no, but you don't want to you don't want to go chill real quick <laughs> oh okay you're not going to watch the uh, binge netflix show <laughs> like it's just different like yeah but it's cool it, it just shows like you know where this game can take you and how many, like, you know, you said, like, God's hands, like, different paths people have and different journeys. So I think, like, to be able to play with so many different people and, like, whose stories are so different is, like, great to learn from, learn not only your game, but, like, as a person, too. Yeah. So if you had one word to, like, describe your first year, you can do one or two. Um, <laughs> what would those words be? Learning. <laughs> definitely learning I just tried to be a sponge sponge yeah. too just tried to like take in as much as you could mm-hmm. um, from the people around me yeah for sure I know like one thing and I don't want this to sound weird but like of course like I was living through you watching your social media and I'm <laughs> cheering you on like I really was like I am like oh, so I appreciate proud. it yeah and just everything and then kind of like you said like you see Asia Wilson and you fangirl like yeah. I see you and I see you with <laughs> Arike and I, I'm fangirling. I'm like, who knows Arike? She gets to play with her. Like they seem like they're such good friends. Like that has to be so cool. Um, Just kind of having like that sisterhood. Like you guys just seem like at Dallas, like you guys play well together. Um, How was it just being like the new kid? Um, Did everyone welcome you with open arms? Yeah. I mean, you definitely like you're nervous going in. You're like, oh my gosh, like what if like a million things. And I'll say like, it was a great transition in terms of like my teammates were and coaches were great. Like they really made sure like you're good. Like it's funny, like at the airport, like all the older players, like obviously the better contracts are for a lot of the older players are not people on their rookie contracts. And they're like at Starbucks, they're like, what do you want? Like, no, no, like put your card away. Like I got, and like, that's like cool. Cause like, you know, I'm sure it's, you know, college is turning into that, but like, this was the first experience. So like, no, no, I got you. Like, let's go to eat, like, and they really make sure, like, you're good, because, like, to them, like, you're a kid, you're, like, 12, <laughs> like, some of my players, like, you know, like, Natasha Howard, she was, like, she literally was, like, called me kid all the time, like, and they're just, like, making sure you're good, like, whatever it is, like, hey, like, I'm making dinner tonight, you want to come over, like, just things like that, which I think, like, makes such a difference, because, like, you know, you're still going through, like, the same things, like, you know, maybe you miss home, maybe, like, you know, your, your graduation, like there's different things that are going on. And I think um, that just helps so much when you have like a good team and you're like, wow, like these guys really got my back. And like, I was so fortunate, you know, that that's how it was. It is at Dallas. Mm-hmm. Now that's awesome. Um, do you have any like aspirations to go play overseas one day? Yeah, I, I think so. I think, um, you know, after this year, I just from college right to the pro WNBA, I needed like little chill time. I felt like it was like a whirlwind. 
Um, but definitely at some point, I think, you know, to be able to play the game, you know, we love in different places, the place that can bring you uh, would be great. But for me this year, AU was like the perfect opportunity to like really like train my body like a pro in the off season and then play competitively for five weeks at like a highest level. Like there's se- six or seven WNBA players on every team. Mm-hmm. And then it gives you a little time to rest and then right to training camp, which is, you know, ideally that's what, that's when you want to be, you know, playing, playing some of your best basketball. Yeah. So if you could give me like a quick, just day in the life, what is it like for a training camp? Like when you wake up, what are you doing? How are practices, stretching, taking care of your body? Yeah. How's that like? Okay. So rookie, like your times probably to shoot is probably early, like 845. So you shoot for 15, 25 minutes, something like that. Then you go lift. You do like your prehab, a lift, and then you go to the training room. Or you could, or vice versa. Everybody's different. So either training room lift or lift training room. Um, every day, like you got to get something done, which is like different than college because I never went to the training. Like, never, not never, but like I wasn't one of the people who was like, <laughs> I need this today. Yeah. They were like, Maddie, you need to come in today. So going to the wings when they're like, no, you have, what do you, what do you need done? I'm like, nothing. And they're like, no, you need something. <laughs> So that was new. And then, you know, you go, you get your ankles taped or your your braces on. And then, like, you'll have, like, some type of pre-practice, either station, shooting, like, so probably, probably, like, 35 minutes. Then you go back, snack, whatever, and then you go into practice. And then after practice, ice tubs. My girl Kalani Brown made sure on the first day was, like, get in the ice tub. And I literally went to my knees and she's like, no, you better get all the way in because your body is going to need it tomorrow. So then I was like, okay, <laughs> all right. I'm like, all right, if they're all doing it, I guess I've got to go in. So then you're probably leaving the gym like 1, 2 o'clock. And then obviously as the season goes on, you're practicing, you know, it's it's less, con- it's, you know, more condensed. But that was like camp for at least a week or a week and a half. Yeah. Awesome. That's that's, that's cool. I'm yeah. honestly just asking because I'm like, this is going to be. Curious. Here. I hope. you soon, girl. Yeah. I, hope, I hope so, man. That's, oh, that's yeah. cool. Um, it will like, be. What is speaking of that? What is one piece of advice that you might give me, um, just about going pro and you know your work ethic and how you believe you got there and things that I can do now to help me get to where you are? Definitely like, taking care of your body because like you know the healthier you can be in terms of like feeling your best, like the yeah. better you're gonna play basketball. Um, something that took me a long time to figure out is quality over quantity. So if your body if you're going to get the most out of a 20 minute shooting, then an hour shooting, then do the 20 minutes. And like, that was a tough for me to adjust to the pro because Villanova, if I had a bad shooting game, I would literally shoot the next day until my arm fell off. Mm -hmm. And like realizing like, that's not the answer, you know, as a pro, like you have to take care of your body. So like, maybe it's like, you know, shooting form shots so your shot feels good and then taking a step back, whatever it is, like quality is so important. And like, in terms of the draft, like, doesn't like don't to put too much stock in like the mock drafts or where you get pit, you know that kind of thing because like if you go and do what you're supposed to do wherever you go you're gonna you're gonna be okay and you're gonna shine and like even if it's not you know might not be the first team you're on it might be like there's so many different journeys and I definitely encourage like everybody like to look at different people's journeys because it's not all you know not everyone has the same the same path for sure. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I think I needed yeah. to hear that, especially like yeah. quality over or no, quality, excuse me, over quantity. Because I feel like sometimes the college, it's different, of course. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. If you have longer practices and then like you said, you have a bad game, you want to just hurry up and get in the gym. But yeah. like, sometimes you just need to take a step back, <laughs> breathe and it's, yeah. you'll be fine, like on to the next game. So yeah, I appreciate that. No, of course. Like off days, like definitely like I'm not a big, like in college, it was not a big off day. I'm like off days, no. <laughs> You need an off day. Your body needs to rest sometimes. And even that, like, mobility circuit, perfect. That's what your body needs. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been so great. But we're wrapping things up. But before you go, I have a fun little segment. And it's just, like, rapid fire. Um, All right. Ask you a few questions. um, And you just give me your honest answer, okay? Okay. (laughs) So the first question is, do you have a pregame ritual? Yes. Uh, Now it's just take a nap. Oh, okay. Take a nap before the game. Rest. (laughs) College, I had a lot, but pros, you have to, once again, condense, quality, take a nap. See, that's, okay, that's crazy, because for me, like, I can't, I feel like if I take a nap, I'll be sluggish. So, for you, does that give you, does that give you energy, or it just makes you feel? No, I just feel like when the game's, like, 8 o'clock at night, it's just long. It's just long. 
But even like when we used to play like 1 p.m., I would go to breakfast, come back, sleep for 45 minutes, and go. But I would be too jumpy before the game. But everybody's different. It yeah. worked for me. Gotcha. Um, favorite place to vacation? Ooh, Bermuda. I haven't been in a while, but I need to go back. Um, I need to go there in general. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Definitely. Get there. Yeah. Okay, next one. Who is your GOAT? It can be NBA or WNBA. Hmm. Probably, honestly, I'm going to go with Larry Bird. I'm a big Larry Bird fan. Okay. I feel like I you guess, told me that. I, I feel like I also – remember they called me that at whatever at USA? What was I our think coach's maybe, name? Maybe that's what it was, yeah. But I like how he, the way he shot the ball. I thought that was cool. That's funny. So probably him. But now, like, probably LeBron, Asia, Brianna Stewart, one of those people. Yeah. I'm with you with LeBron and Asia. It's my top two for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're um, they're tough. Tough. Do you have a tough. favorite sneaker? Got to plug my Puma right there. Puma <laughs> Nitros for sure. A little promo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you. It was a layup. I have to take. It. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> um, favorite artist, musical artist. Whew. Honestly, I've been on a Noah Khan, or I don't even know how to say the last name. It's like a country artist. I've been on that recently. Okay. Or Zach Bryan, but I feel like that's basic. I've been okay. So my teammates have put me on country, and when I tell you I love Zach Bryan, I think he might be my favorite. No, he's great. Yeah, he's I'll really put like little Zach Bryan radio. I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. Who has been like your favorite or toughest opponent that you've ever played against? Well, I guess this year probably the Aces. I mean, just knowing that like right now they're the standard of the WNBA, so they're definitely the best. So that that definitely them. Yeah. Um, okay. Is there anything that you say a lot? And I feel like you have a very strong accent. I've always said this. So you have to tell the people where you're from, first of all. And then is there any slang that you say a lot? Uh, New York. Um, <laughs> what do I get the most heat for? Oh, where do you put your socks? In a drawer? So I say draw. Oh, Everyone gosh. always like, not draw. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know. So you, you put your clothes in the draw? <laughs> Yeah, I'd be like, oh, can you open the draw? Like that. So I think that that's the heaviest, like that's the word I have the heaviest accent on, for sure. That's funny. Okay, and last one, what's your favorite number? 20. 20. You said 20? Yeah. 20. Why, why is 20? I've been 20, like high school, college, now WNBA, so just got to stick with what works for you. I mean, hey, all those awards that I listed, 20 is a good <laughs> number, okay? It's about 20 awards, so <laughs> 20 records broken. <laughs> but thank you so much, Maddie, for coming on. This has been so fun and so great catching up with you. Yeah, thank you so much, and good luck this weekend. Thank you so much. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe, like, um, and follow along for the rest of the episodes. I have some more good stuff coming. But, yeah, thank you so much, Maddie. This has been great.